She's a Christian as well. Before you know it, we turned with I mean, we became prayer partners. We prayed together on issues and to the glory of God, testimonies to all those issues. Hallelujah. Then my family have not joined me. I mean, oh, these are all the things we pray about. To the glory of God, they are here now. I mean, we have moved ahead and things have changed over years. I'm so happy to be a part of this, to see that she's celebrating and protected. Like I still remember when mommy was sick back in Nigeria. And in the morning we come together, you know, she will call Nigeria and like this situation I'm like I'm taking care of my people. Nobody to take care of my mommy. And I mean so all of a sudden somebody, I mean, that was a sister, I mean the sister just they got somebody that was really taking care of mama and to the glory of God she got well and everything was, was, was good. I'm so I'm I bless God to have met you, to have known you. Thank God for all those times, for all the prayers, and thank God for 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 for, for, for this wonderful God. The the, the answering Prayer God that answers the prayer no matter the situation, even no matter your condition, he still answers prayer. Oh, yes, he answers prayer. Oh, yes, he answers prayer. The Lord has answers prayers. Oh, yes, he answers prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you see, you spent just 20 seconds. Ah. Why are you watching your time? Are you watching it? Just 20 seconds. So, number two, Costco scan number two. Costco scan, I mean, Costco scan number two. Costco scan. Who is number two, please? Are you number three, daddy? I know you are number three. Number two is from that side. It's one mommy, I think. I want daddy. Oh, oh, beautiful girl. Come on. Everybody, I want to like the water to the two. Everybody, I want to you see, a lot of others are not even born to know what. Well, you know what? I'm the African story. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. We are not in know what. You see? I'm in know what. God bless you, Gary. What's the name? Flourish. Ah! I will put the chat. I don't know how to flourish. God bless you again, Gary. Say something about money. Um, put it in your mouth. Yes. I'll um, bite you. I know. Uh, 
Um, 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 I don't. Yeah, what do you know about money? Say something about money. Genesis, Exodus. Yes, good. Yes, we do that. She wanted to say that she teaches them from the school, teach, teaches them Genesis and to us to I mean to Revelation and she also gave them juice and biscuits. Uh -huh. I mean, that was what you told me now. They are saying what do you know about grammar? Um, she teaches me from the school. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of people can come up to ah, I'm falling to call it a lucky thing in Catamonia. How many of us are you? Or do what come when you send this school? Uncle Money, get us to Revelation. Uncle Comway, so the Roman Calder only stop. Over Cabo was sixty six chapter. Praise the Lord. Um, I actually have a lot to say about um, Sister Juma. She's um, a wonderful person. We go to the same church and um, she takes care of the kids just like um, the little girl said. And she's so wonderful with the kids that anytime you see her with the kids, she doesn't get bothered by the things that they do. You know, a lot of times you see some people, they get irritated when they have little kids around them. But with her, she's always in a happy mood every time. And um, secondly, me and her, we used to speak, I was like, not stonky. <laughs> We used to speak I was at once in a while together and she makes me remember some of these things that I've forgotten back in the days when we were Nigeria. And also she loves to pray. Every morning she sends me prayer. I mean on WhatsApp and every time I see her prayers, they are powerful prayers. So I just want to say the Lord will continue to bless you. He will uphold you. Keep being good to people. I mean, we love you so much. You. I can't say more than this, but you know how much I love you. Thank God bless you. you. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, Kimi. Okay, what is Kimi? You are welcome, everybody. I am not a man of many words. This is the second time I'm seeing Mrs. Fallacy, and what I have to say is that she has a magic wand. She has turned an old man into a young man. <laughs> Because at times you decide through observation. This is a guy who have been coming for more than 40 years, if not up to 50 years. He's a nice guy, basically. But uh, like all of us, he's gone through some ups and downs. But with the entry of this lady into his life, he has changed. Uh, uh, he has made a U-turn. in all aspects and all spheres of life. As I, this is the second time I'm seeing her. But through my observation of my good friend, she has done a good job. I mean, the Almighty God continue to support you. The good job which the Lord has appointed you to do, you will accomplish it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, number five. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for the life of Sister Juma. I want to say I'm not ashamed to be called her pastor. Uh, since she started worshiping with us. There is a word to describe her. She loves the Lord. When you love the Lord, there are certain things you don't say by words of mouth, but in the demonstration of it. 
Um, our church is in Joppa. Joppa, Maryland. She lives with her husband at Rolling Road, not too far from here. Sometimes, if she doesn't walk, she gets to church, our workers' empowerment start by 10, 10 a.m. She gets there before some of us will be close by. What am I saying? The love for the Lord makes someone to worship God unconditionally, even when there's a pain. Not only that, when there's a need in the church, when we mention the need in the church, she goes for it. She goes for the need. And then when someone loves the Lord, you can easily relate with that person and talk about the deep things of the ministry and what we need for the church to move forward. No wonder the people that are spoken, they spoke of the love of the Lord in our life and the reflection is also in the spouse. If you love the Lord, you will love your neighbor. If you love the Lord, you will love your church. If you love the Lord, you will love your pastor. If you love the Lord, you do good to people you meet, even including those you do not meet, you do not see, or do not, you do not know from others. And this is the testimonies I have of you, man. Uh, you cannot tell your stories fully. Uh, you will need people to tell your story. Who will tell you much more other than your pastor under whom you, you have been sitting? So I, I, I repeat it. And I also thank the Lord that when the Lord brought the two of you together, yeah. uh, it was a day that the Lord had sanctified for good. And the goodness of the Lord had started to, in fact, had continually radiate in the life of your spouse. Uh, my advice to you is to continue in the good work. When you read the Art of Apostle, we ask people who have poured waters on the hands of the prophet. Eh? Go and read the people, the, the lives of Dorcas Lydia. What did they do? They, pour, they, they, they let all they do, they do selfless work uh, in the course of the ministry. And all, I, all my prayer is that the Lord will prosper you and the Lord will increase the zeal uh, of, his, of his work inside of you. Uh, we do not want that, oh, you loved the Lord yesterday and now today it has weakened. No. We want the fire to keep burning. And, and I take of you from Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, Aaron were the people that were granted authority to burn sacrifice on the altar. And the check was that no, 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 no single woman should fire be out of the altar. And I pray the fire upon your altar shall continually burn. Amen. It shall not be put off. Amen. Even in the order of the prophet of whom. And I also pray too that even the zeal, the love you have for the Lord will continually wash strong. It shall not wash cold. In the name of the Lord. And those things that you ask of the Lord, especially those that have not come to manifestation, by reason of your love and all you have done today, championing or kind of lifting up Jesus in the midst of people, the Lord will be there for you. And he will come true for you. In the name of the Lord. Shall we appreciate the Lord in this, this very place? Just put those two hands together for him. Because he is faithful. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's appreciate the Pastor. Yes. Um, I'm calling <coughs> our daddy, Mr. Oweleke. He has something to say. Before we call on the celebrant herself to give her testimony. Let's clap for him now. Ah, very sorry. Okay. My big sister, yes, okay. Today is your day. Um, good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Oweleke. I am the immediate younger brother to the celebrant. Um, I didn't want to do this earlier. When she told me that I needed to speak, I, I said no. I declined. Um, she didn't know why, but for two reasons. One, I am not an Owambe kind of person. Um, I'm a very boring man. That's just the truth. 
And uh, secondly, I am not a microphone person. That is just it. Uh, but she didn't know why. She was not happy when I said it. But uh, I know that but something just when several people have spoke. I looked at the people that spoke and uh, highest uh, is uh, the people who got to know her maybe four, five, or six years back. I, I said, well, who can speak um, for her or about her like me? Nobody. <laughs> we are born from the same womb all our lives. We've been together, so I think uh, I am the I should be, or rather, I am the perfect person to talk about her. Um, we always have issues, we always quarrel like cat and dog sometimes. You know, usually, when uh, when uh, the lady is the first child of the family, usually, the lady, when it's the senior to the, to, the, to the man, it's always uh. Uh, a talk of war. I always want to exert that manhood again and impose it on her, but she, as a senior, wants to stick to her ground. And uh, on several occasions, we always uh, we are always at log ahead. Um, but I love her so much. She knows that I love her so much. Um, she is a, a testimony, a living testimony. Um, her life has been up, first, down, second, up, again, and um, not really down, somehow um, on the surface level. Um, when we were growing, she was uh, taken away by parents, my mom to be precise, was a contractor, so as a, by virtue of that, she got to know some of this uh, northern elites. So, the royal home uh, requested, they liked her, one of the uh, daughters of the royal home in Borno State, came to visit the house and they saw her, all of a sudden she fell in love with her and uh, she took her. And my mom, my parents obliged. Um, the next time we see, we met our sister, we saw our sister was, she became a Muslim. She was already a Muslim. She didn't even say anything, she came back home one holiday, she was in the high institution then. Um, and uh, requested for water. Uh, I said, what, what do you want to do with water? Can, look, this is the fridge, you order. She said, no, she wants to perform ablution. I said, what? <laughs> ablution? I said, sister, what are you talking about? Say, my friend, get out. And she did that. All of a sudden, I saw her spread her whatever, and she started, I was looking at her. I, went, I rushed to my mom's bedroom. I said, mommy, see, sister is a Muslim. My God. The, the thing became a serious issue, but my mom, my parents, they they didn't, they weren't there uh, because we were actually not, we were nominal Christians. It wasn't uh, a Christian kind of, my mom was, uh, um, my, okay, sorry, I make reference to my mom. We actually, um, unfortunately, we we, we, part, we faced a, a broken home. So my mom was the one who took mostly care of us. So, um, my mom was a type who never had time for God. Today is Selene. The next day is Cherubim and Seraphim. The other day is uh, another day is uh, Jehovah Witnesses. At that time, she would take us to what? In fact, we attended. We became Catholics at the same time. We attended so many churches. So we were just aware. So when she became a Muslim, my mom wasn't. She wasn't. She wasn't bothered. That wasn't a problem. But eventually, thank God, after she graduated. Um, no, sorry, she was still in school, she got married. She married at a very tender age. So, she married, and uh, luckily her husband uh, converted her. But before then, she became, she was so, not just a Muslim, she was a very, very staunch Muslim. That 
she was she found it difficult to she became like do I say ustaz? You know those ustaz, how they believe they behave so righteous. So anytime she visited the family house, she wasn't associating with us. She was like, don't don't date me, don't stay me or whatever. So she became that extreme. She became a, went, to, went to Mecca and became Hajia or whatever. And uh, that is it. But thank God she got married. And um, after the first child, um, the first, that, that, that was the son. And the second, that's about barely two years, barely three years into the marriage, that was where the down came up. And um, she got poisoned after labor. In fact, I, on her labor bed, after she was, she has she has given birth, um, she got poisoned. That uh, honestly, the enemy wanted her dead. The poison was to, by medical examination or whatever, it was a, it was a miracle that she survived even 24 hours. She was to die on that labor bed. Um, that was where the whole issue started, and then uh, she became paralyzed from head to toe. She was like vegetable. She became vegetable. Thus, she couldn't eat, she couldn't drink, she couldn't talk, she couldn't open her eyes. Her nerves, her entire, she had complete nerve breakdown. And uh, Unfortunately, even up to today, this thing has happened about 30 years ago, more than that. But her steps, if you watch her step, the thing affected her steps. Steps are not too firm. So, everybody lost hope for about 16 months. We took her from one end of the country to the other. We went too far, just, uh, just like I say, you, of course, my mom. She's always here, there, there, there. So we went to Farelele. We went to Guru Maharaji. We went to the whole native doctors and whatever. Babalao, Celeste, talk about anything you can think about. Everywhere we went around. And uh, eventually came back to Kaduna. And there was this sister, a born again Christian. My mom was struggling to carry her into the vehicle to take her to another cell. Somebody does that. They just say, this man is a strong man. And this, uh, she will get it. We eventually took her to cell. That is this one. This whole spiritual matter started after she defied all medical. In fact, there was not no medical um, whatever name, no medical diagnosis that could be given to what was wrong with her. So that was when we now took to spiritual or whatever. So there was revelation that she was she was attacked and that was poisoned or whatever. So many revelations came up and eventually the sister actually confessed and became a born again much later. Um so back to where I stopped. Um the sister now, correct. They were about, we were about struggling to put her convey her into the vehicle, and this sister was just passing by. And she saw how we were struggling, my mom. And she accosted my mom and asked, I told my mom, we greeted my mom and asked my mom, and asked my mom, what is wrong with your daughter, Uma? My mom broke into tears and said, my daughter, this is my life, whatever. My sister was lifeless. She was lifeless. And um, this born again sister now suggested to my mom, mama, if I suggest something to you, will you adhere, will you listen to me? He said, my daughter, I have lost hope. Wherever you want us to go, let us as long as there is solution. So she said, I am already, you can see me with Bible, I am heading to the church. Can we go to the church? I said, why not? Where is it? So, where is it? Where is the church? My mom said, and the lady said, not too far from here. I said, okay, why don't you enter the car? Let's go. And um, went to this 
a kind of little small church. And it was this pastor, a lady pastor, that God used. And um, something will have gone around the whole world, the whole country. And there was, there was no solution. God used a sister who was just a minister, not really a full-time pastor. She was just a deliverance minister. Then she got there, my mom busted to cry or whatever, and she told my mom to get out. Just she rebuked my mom, just get out of the place and told my mom to leave. She shouldn't grieve the spirit. And uh, she just prayed. Simple prayer. For the first time in 16, in 18 months, somebody who was a vegetable stood for the first time. Somebody who was a vegetable drank water for the first time. Somebody who was a vegetable ate for the first time. Before if she ate, if she ate, the food comes back, water goes back because the nervous system, the entire nerves were not working. So for the first time, she stood, but she was just a kind of wobbling. And uh, eventually, God delivered her. Why I brought this story is because we are just said, we're just talking about her 50 years on earth. Um, we need to know what God has really done in her life to appreciate why she is doing this today. Um, so, that was one. She gave her life to Christ. And the virus, when we say virus, anything virus is supposed to be negative. But in this case, well, permit me to use that. The virus spread in the family. So God, she was a vessel God used to bring light into the family. The entire family, my parents, everybody gave their life to Christ. That was everybody, that was when we realized, we, we knew who Christ is. And uh, up to today, thank God to the glory of God, everybody in the family, everybody, none left out. Everybody in the family is a child of God. We give God the glory. So thank God for everything. Thank God, my dear sister. I know I have uh, opened up a kind of uh, healed uh, wound and sorrow. I can understand uh, your emotions. But uh, I know probably you've forgotten. I decided to bring up this for you to know what God has really done in your life. You are a child of destiny. Talking about people who, about her kind of heart. Um, she worked in Coca-Cola as um, a quality assurance manager. Incidentally, she has a colleague here who worked with her for so many years. I, I, wanted, her to, I wanted him to talk about her, but uh, probably he is my kind of person and uh, anti one person. <laughs> so, um, honestly, why she was passing through that ordeal, that's to tell you the kind of person she is. The management, that was, she was in Coca-Cola then, the management, the top management refused to let her go. They were still paying her salary for that 16 months. She was almost dead, everybody knew it. His workers, everybody knew it, but her bosses in the, in the office knew it. She was almost dead. Yet, they refused to let her go. She collected her salary, that's to tell you the kind of person she is. I wish Mr. Rashid could talk about her because everybody has spoken. Get up, Rashid. Yeah. It's just, it's just beyond, beyond what we can, what, what the word, what words can utter. So to God be the glory, my dear sister, I love you so much. I pray that God will be with you, will promote you above all. That the Christ you have found, just like the, our pastor talked, prayed about for you, that you will continue to increase in the Lord. Above all things, inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you so very much. You have been so wonderful, like a mother to me in this country. Thank you very much. And your husband, daddy, God bless you so much. I appreciate you for everything you have done. I, don't, I can't say everything here, but I appreciate you so much for everything. Thank you so very much, sir. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. It's not a microphone, man. You only talk for 10 seconds. It's not, it's, it's not the top, top one. Though. 
It's not the old one, man. No. <laughs> Mr. Rashid, I have the audacity uh, to bring you outside here. Okay, after. Yeah, say we talk after. So, uh, mommy, mommy, dance. Uh, mommy, 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 uh, Yes, I'm calling mommy Owolabi. He said you have left me. Okay. No, Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to appreciate this uh, pretty, beautiful lady. Um, when I met her, the first day I met her, you know, my spirit just flowed with her. Because she's so humble, cheerful, respectful, always smiling and I love her nature and this is uh, there are some uh, things that I find in her that all women uh, should have if she knows that you are related to the husband the way she will behave to you you will think you have known each other for years some people when they meet their husband relation the way they will look at you and we are not even sure who she is or this or that the way some women will behave, even not to their uh, husband relations alone. They look down on you as if you are not nothing. But uh, our wife is not like that. As soon as she sees you far off, she will almost be kneeling down and showing sign of uh, respect for you. And, you know, one of the, I really love her so much. Each time I see uh, uh, my brother, the husband, First thing I ask, how is our wife? And when we talk on phone or this or that, or when she comes to me, I meet her anywhere. I don't want her even leaving me like that because I always like being around her. And I just pray as our daddy in the Lord, the pastor has prayed for you. All the prayers that everybody has stretched their hand to you, I'm sure God has hearkened to all your prayers and your requests your heart desires will be granted unto you. Amen. You will live your life in full, your full good old age in divine perfect health. And you will, you will reap, enjoy the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus. You will celebrate many, many more years in good health in the name of Jesus. I just want you to continue with your good nature that everybody has talked about, both in the church and uh, people around you, the way you, you, you show yourself as a humble woman, Showing respect and you know um, drawing people nearer to yourself because uh, your people say you should the congress. See how people showed up. You, are, you will never never be alone, and none of us will be alone in Jesus' name. God bless you more and more in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, mommy. You see your co-worker saying something about you. You see someone that is older than you saying something about you. Uh -huh. That's a good person. I don't know why that is on Kabe Empire. I can't think by yes. And like I said, I know I barely a month ago and uh, I can at least I say a month. When we were planning this program, that was when I you know, and, uh, she has been <coughs> she's good. Yes. Yes, I'm moving now to the celebrant. She's going to give our whole testimony. We've had some from the brother. So she's going to tell us the remaining one. How she became a larger. How she didn't have any maka. Uh, so she will tell us all that. And that is too we talk, but not now. That will be after the second entry. Praise the Lord. If I have 10,000 tongues, I cannot tell it all. Nara, 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 kele, nara, kele. Yeah, what I, find, what I just sang is, even though I have 10,000 tongues, I cannot tell it all. Only what I have to say to God today is to say, receive my thanksgiving. Like my brother said, my life is a testimony. Um, he is saying, uh, um, is it how many months? To me, my calculation is five years that I was paralyzed, moving from one place to another. The doctor declared, 
even before start moving, they declared, you know, when the doctors will say, I've given you four months to leave, three months to leave. That was what I was given. The three months passed. Even when God healed me, rise up and walk. And I rose. I went back to the hospital. They, they could not believe it. They said 0.001% of survivor out of 100 that nobody survives it of what the poison has caused. Even me, when they were praying, you know, that was when I had an encounter with Jesus. I was a Muslim. You know, when the woman came to say, oh, daughter of Zion, that is the name they address me. And can you imagine, I'm a strong Muslim. I just, I persecuted the, the Christians. I, I was, I was, you know, in my school. When they come to our campus, they, they come to preach, I would persecute them because... You know, I was taught that uh, I'm fighting jihad. I die. So if I die, I'm going to heaven. So I'm doing a, a good cause, a good fight. I'm fighting. So with all my heart and mind, I was doing it. So I want you with God. <laughs> when God wants to use you, <laughs> in any situation you are, you'll be the best there. You'll be doing it, even to, to, to your own detriment. So I give God all the glory. I don't have... The testimony I have to tell to, to, today is if I have 10,000 tongues, I cannot tell it all than to say thank you, Father. It has been. Is it uh, through Marita? Like I said, uh, God gave me my soulmate. You know, before he gave me, he was saying, oh, no, I'm this, that. I don't think it will work. I don't think uh, this, this. You know, but I give God the glory today that God has planned for us. Even when the enemy says, oh, yours is finished. I'm just advising each of us who may be facing one thing or the other. Human beings may, may be written us off, but when God says, I'm writing you out, up, lifting you up, Nothing human being can do. So I give all the glory to God. My prayer is, may he not let me fall. May he lead me all through my life till at the end, like the Apostle Paul says, that I have fought a good fight of faith. That is my prayer and for everybody that came to me. That is my prayer. Praise the Lord. So, can you take care? The closing... In our mommy and the choir, please. Can you please come forward?
our celebrant and daddy, you can go and change. So you can shake and the people as you are doing. Ebo wala wa wo. Ebo wala wa wo. Shake ah. I'm 